Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this has absolutely nothing to do with Shirtless Bear Fighter number two, which is a good funny book, but I was watching Rocky Three last night, and for some reason I was like, I'm going to look up how old the actor who portrays Polly was in the third movie, because he looks old as hell, but he's kind of talking like he's a similar age to Rocky, and then I looked him up. And he was only 42 when the third movie was... Oh my god. I, I Back in the day, people just used to age like that. Just people in their 40s looked like what a 68-year-old like a looks like nowadays. Um, but anyway, this is Shirtless Bear Fighter. You might tell it's in kind of bad shape. I literally threw it to someone. I didn't even hand it. Like, oh, you'll probably like to stupid shit. I <laughs> threw it across the room. And then later, I heard it was good, so I decided to do a uh, review of it. And uh, it was freaking awesome. It was, uh, I laughed so hard at this. So um, if you're, how do I explain this? About... Oh, geez, I guess it was about seven years ago. Um, humor got really trash. Like, all of the jokes were like, um, bacon? <laughs> That's, like, a thing? And, like, mustaches? So you just, it would, like, for, like, two or three years, every Facebook photo would be, like, the gals hanging out, and they would have, like, plastic mustaches. I remember it was... It was bacon, it was mustaches, and there was some other thing. Unicorns or something like that. It's like, this is like funny, and it was just horribly unfunny. That time went away. But when I heard about the shirtless bear fighter, I was like, ah, oh, this is that type of humor, and it's just going to be awful. So it's about this kind of like Rambo-like character named shirtless bear fighter. And uh, I, I started right here, and I was like... This looks like a coloring book. It's so obviously done digitally, so there's not really any depth or tooth to it. It just it looks like a, a coloring book. Um, but then they have these uh, they have these uh, fighter pilots. He's like, I'm looking at those crazy bears HQ. Turning it up on the flip down like we talked about. And the other guy's like, You're killing me, Jackrabbit. Learn the lingo for God's sake. He's like, Ten four, Dil. I don't know why I, I thought that was funny. Um, and then we get this awesome, uh, funny action scene where they drop bombs, but there, there will be some collateral damage with civilians. So shirtless bear fighter grabs the back of the bombs, and then he goes, best head on out of here, Burke. About to get loud. And he starts hitting these cartoon bears. I mean, look at this double uppercut. That is amazing use of, like, cartoon uh, logic and cartoon style drawing. <laughs> Freaking rams them down the bear's throat. And then he drop kicks both of them into a construction site and it blows up while he's Mark Wahlberg walking away. I was like, okay, I got a mild chuckle and a cool funny action scene. But, you know, it's this era of like, and they actually do, bacon is a major plot twist. Beards or facial hair is another one. But I have this stuff like his, he's got like this jump jet that has a bunch of bear skins on it. And then I, la I laughed like, the funny thing is in classic humor style, it was about escalation. We had an amusing joke where I didn't laugh out loud. We had uh, a joke that escalated. I laughed twice because I thought we reached a punchline and we didn't. So he's fighting bears. So they're like, Houston, Atlanta, New Orleans. New York, you're like, okay, cool, it's a montage. And then it's like, uh, Chicago, it's like, it's the Chicago Bears. So you go like, <laughs> eh, okay, it's a pun, just whatever. And then San Francisco. <laughs> and then we flash back to Vietnam. I guess this guy doesn't age much. At one point, uh, he's talking about like fighting a, a panda bear in Vietnam, and she goes, uh, I thought pandas only lived in China. He says, they do now. But the one that made me laugh actually way too hard uh, was uh, this one. This is like stupid. I was almost kind of angry at myself for laughing so hard at this. But he's like, he hands him, he hands him a note and it says, Ra 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 ra, and then it's signed Ra, and it says, "We are coming, the bear." 
have freaking laugh so you ever laugh so hard you actually almost kind of like bark like it comes out so forcefully so so the rest of it is not as funny they start to get more into the plot and i didn't really care about the plot and some of the blots uh, some of the jokes are like um bacon is like soupy super yummy numbers or what and i was like Ugh. um there was a there was a gross out gag that Grossed me out and made me gag. And it was kind of funny, but it was more gross than anything else. So I was like, hey. Eh. Um, then we get back to the plot. It's good. It's solid. But uh, I'm just saying this came out three years ago. <laughs> so it's not on the stand. But if you do find the trade paperback, I think it's a safe bet that if you found the jokes here to be amusing, that you would like the, uh, the book as a whole. I, I have to say one other thing before I end. I don't like this. You have five names underneath the title. Like, okay, you got three creators, but there's only two writers. To me, it should say Lehup and Gurner and Vendril. Like that, I know that's very nice that he's a colorist and you credit him. That's very nice you credit the letterer, but I mean, why? Where's the person who chopped down the trees that this wood pulp was made from? Who uh, who squished the blueberries to make this blue ink? Obviously, if this is an image book where you just turn it in and and you have to do all the production, so they're like, well, why wouldn't we credit everyone? Well, also, why would you? In my opinion, the cover is for people that are going to get you to buy the book. And as much as I love good lettering and good coloring, I've been collecting comics for 32 years, you know, on a weekly basis when not deployed or super poor. And I buy stuff for characters, writers, and artists, specifically pencilers or people who pencil and ink their own stuff. So it's, I just found it distracting when I was like, da da da, like, why, why isn't, um, why isn't, uh, Lay Thomas, the print manager on there? And we can't forget, um, David Brothers, the branding manager, the inimitable Shauna Matuzak, production artist, and of course, Everyone's favorite, Marla Isaac, administrative assistant. So anyway, it is a recommend. Um, I, I, based off of reading one issue, I'd say they, they've got it down. Good solid art that gets better in the funnier parts. Um, I don't think the, the idea of shirtless bear fighter is funny in and of itself, but they had jokes in it that were funny. So um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for every... For notifications, thanks to everyone given to the GoFundMe. I just added a Patreon uh, in the Indiegogo. You're finding original content and an original lawsuit. And I will have more new and old comic book reviews up all this week. Thanks. Bye.